Good morning friends we are back with a new video in our tutorial series of concepts of ROS so today we will be understanding from basics about what are ROS messages if you are new to ROS this is a great start because we will build the concept from the scratch if you are an intermediate ROS learner where you have done some projects and have some understanding of how ROS works this will be a great video because at the end we will go into some concepts which very few ROS users know. So make sure you watch the video till the end. So in this first question which we should answer is what is ROS messages? To split it down, they are simple data structures comprising of different fields. A ROS message is like a struct in C. Let's make it easier. So ROS message can have a bunch of strings, arrays, int, doubles, etc. And ROS messages are used by topics, services, and action libs. If you want to have a look at custom ROS messages, you can go to any standard package and you will see a folder named MSG or SRV. Also, we should note here that ROS messages can be saved as .msg and if it is a service, it will be .srv. These were the basics of what are ROS messages. If you feel it is difficult, wait for it, we will make it easier. If you see ROS messages are of two types, that means some messages are been built by the ROS community for us, like we have standard messages which includes string, double, int, etc. Then we have geometry messages, which includes point or a quaternion, vector, etc. Then we have action lib messages and gazebo messages. So these are messages which are already built by the community. And if you have an application where you need mix and match of these standard messages, then there is a way to write your own custom message as well. Before going into details of what are messages, let's have a small activity. So you need to open your terminal and in terminal, you should do ROS core. In this case, I am using ROS Nordic and Ubuntu 2004. When I do ROS core, I should see some text popping. I will open another terminal and I will do ROS topic list. So in list, I can see two messages being ROS out and ROS out arg. So I can do ROS topic info slash ROS out. If I do enter, it will show me what type of message is been sent and received, who is publishing the message and who is subscribing to the same. So now we know that there is a message named ROS graph messages slash log if you want to go in detail what this message is we are going to use a tool named ROS message show and when i paste the message type and hit enter i see what all details are there in the message so this message has a standard message header it also has bits named level it has some strings like name, message, file, function, and it has a list of string as well. So this is a method by which you can go into any topics info and whatever you see in the type, you should type it in here where ROS message show and the message type, and you will be able to see the details of that message. Let's do one more message which is easy and which everyone knows, which is ROS message, show, geometry message, and let's do point. If I hit on enter, I see three things here being X, Y, Z, which are three coordinates of a point in 3D space, and they are float 64. So this is a method by which you can use this ROS message tool. One last thing that if you type dash R means raw and if you hit on enter, this is exactly how 
it is defined inside the file so these were some details of ross message now next time whenever you see a new project of ross and if you feel like diving deep into what messages are used you should use this trick on the other hand this is very important trick because if you want to publish a message on a particular topic you need to know its message type usually people don't know that where these messages reside this is not necessary but i want our community to know something extra so for that if you do cd slash opt ross noetic share and hit enter and if i do ls here are all the packages which you have in ross for example i see action lib underscore messages i see common messages so do this activity in your pc and see what all types of messages you have also if i go into any action lib messages action lib i can see here there is a folder named message and you can see that it has three messages with the extension of dot msg this is exactly what we discussed initially where in any package if you want to see any custom message you need to look for a folder named msg so this was a small activity about ross message tool now let's dive into what are the different categories of ross message so these categories are defined according to its application a ross message used in topics are different than messages in service and messages in action lib we will go into details of each of these types and make you understand better so first of all a glimpse of ross topic so ross topic is like an unidirectional stream of communication that means it's like an radio where one party is publishing the information and on the other hand there are parties listening to it this is analogous to what is done in ross system so there are publishers and subscribers where publishers publish the data on a particular topic of a particular message type and there are subscribers who know what to expect what message type and they are ready to subscribe this is decoupled where publishers does not have knowledge about who all are subscribing to the topic and subscriber also does not know who is publishing it and in this system you can have multiple publishers and multiple subscribers to particular topic so if you want to see this in a pictorial form we have two nodes here one being a publisher and other being a subscriber or a receiver so node 1 when we initialize the node we need to define on what topic it is going to publish and what will be the message type so those details are given to ross master and ross master does the bookkeeping so this is a small triangle which will give you the importance of your message type in topics this is a small example of custom messages where i have header i have a string which is child frame id and i also have a pose which is of type geometry messages slash pose with covariance so if someone wants to access this message you need to subscribe to a callback and then you need to do message dot child frame id which will give you a string or you can do message dot pose dot x in order to get the x dimension of the pose so this was all about messages in topics this is a great video where there are steps in order to make a custom message for your project and now as we discussed a publisher needs to define the message type in order to advertise to a particular topic also subscribers needs to specify the message type in its callback so this was all about ross messages in topics so now let's go into details of services so as you know if you have unidirectional communication inside your ross system you cannot achieve all the applications with it some places you need bidirectional communication so 
in ROS, there are services. They are of type request and response. So this is a great way of communication because it has lower overhead and it has higher performance because services are only called when data is required. On the other hand, topics will always publish the data. So once you subscribe to the topic, you will get the stream of data continuously. If you are using services in your application, you need to know that it is different than topic. Hence, its message type is also different. So an example of service in real life can be RF communication, where you have a person who is receiving the data from his phone and he can talk. So it's a bi-directional communication. So similarly, you can see the pictorial diagram of ROS service where there is a client and a server. So client will send a request and wait till it gets the response and server will process the request and send the response. So if you have understood the video till now, you must already have idea of what we are going to discuss. For a particular service, you have two parts, one being request, another being response. So this is an example of SRV. So this is a special type of message which has two parts. In this case, we have two integers A and B, which are the request. So client will send these two integers to the server and server will process it and send back the response. For server, you need to define your service message type when you write the function and for client, you need to define the service message when you subscribe to a particular service. And now the special part, which is action lib. So till now we saw messages with one part, services with two parts, and let's see how action lib works. So let's start with an example where if I have a robot and I want to send it a goal, if I use a service, I will send a goal to a robot and then it will go towards the goal and reach the goal. And that is only when I will get the response for that particular service. If you have a task which can preempt and which will take time, you need to use action libs in place of services. So action lib stack provides the interface for preemptive tasks. So for example, if I have a robot to go to a target location, my action lib message will continuously give me feedback of robot has received the goal. Robot started navigating. Robot saw an obstacle. Robot stopped. Robot took a turn and robot reached the destination. So if there are issues where robot is not able to reach the goal, your client knows it and it can have preventive actions. So that is why if you see the image on right, your client will send a goal and client can also send a cancel. So when client sends a goal, server checks the goal and if it is feasible, it puts it into action and if it's an invalid goal, it will put into pending stack. So in this diagram, there are three parts. The green part is when the action is executed and is successful. The yellow part is it can be successful or it can be rejected. And finally, blue is the done part where you get a response from the action lib that did it succeed or failed. So we are planning to make a detailed video of action lib client state transition. If you are interested in that video, do comment in the comment section and we will make it super fast. As we discussed about topics and services, here we have an extra thing, which is a feedback. So now when action client sends a goal to an action server, it gets continuous feedback from action server and also it gets a result. So this is a three part thing. So now I feel all the viewers will have understanding of how this message type will look. So you guys are right. So this has three parts where you have a goal, you have result and you have feedback. So if you are writing this message here, you need to note that you need to give an extension of dot action when you define or specify this message because your compiler is going to tear this message apart into different parts. So if we look into it, 
if you have a message named fibonacci action your compiler will make bunch of messages out of this action so it will make a message named fibonacci goal fibonacci feedback fibonacci result which makes sense because we gave it a goal result and a feedback but also it adds its standard template and makes a message type fibonacci action and in that action it also has fibonacci action goal fibonacci action feedback and fibonacci action result so this was new right even if you have done projects in ros very few people know that dot action is splitted into seven messages i was confused once because i was looking into a repository where they had dot action and i was puzzled and was not able to find any particular message but then i got to know that these are auto generated messages by the compiler and last but not the least also while defining action lib client and server you need to define action lib message type so this was all about messages if you feel value from this video do share it with your friends do subscribe and click on bell icon for getting the latest updates of new video thank you